in this video we're going to talk about how to do a British accent, how to fake a British accent, how to sound more British, whichever title you prefer to call this video. <laughs> there are many accents all across the UK and they can range from town to town. Yes, town to town. <laughs> in this video we're going to talk about received pronunciation and modern received pronunciation. There are some slight differences between the two varieties, however I will only talk about the major differences and like the most noticeable differences, things that might make your life a little bit easier when you're trying to replicate this accent in this video. So what is received pronunciation? Well, it's an accent that's spoken mostly in the south of England and is considered the standard accent. So when you look in the dictionary for a word, you will see in the British pronunciation section usually received pronunciation or modern received pronunciation. By the way, if you're interested in taking classes to improve your pronunciation or maybe just your English in general, then I highly recommend Preply. Preply offers one-to-one -one classes for many different languages. I take classes on Preply and my Spanish teacher is on Preply and I'm also on Preply giving private lessons to you. By taking one-to-one -one lessons with a teacher, you can learn to confidently speak a new language. I definitely feel loads more confident, and I'm speaking honestly here, I feel loads more confident after taking lessons with my Spanish teacher. I've now started getting compliments about my Spanish, and it's amazing. People saying, oh, you speak Spanish now, or I didn't know you could speak Spanish, or whatever. Your Spanish is so good! and. It makes all those hours of studying grammar and the subjunctive all worth it. <laughs> there are over 50,000 online tutors on Preply, so you can use the filters to search for your perfect tutor. You can find teachers from all around the world exposing you to different accents and helping you get used to listening to different ways of pronouncing words. Different accents, different slang, different varieties and helping to enrich your English. You can take lessons at any time and it's super easy to book on their website or their app. You can keep track of your learning progress, you can do activities outside the lessons to practice what you've studied with your teacher, and you can also take a level test to see what level you're at and what you can improve, which is really useful. I took mine and I was quite surprised at how high my level was. <laughs> In my opinion, it's really a complete platform and is perfect for anyone who's learning any language. I highly recommend it. Now I have two really special things that I'd like to mention. The first one, I've already mentioned it, but I will say it again. If you're interested in having private lessons with me, so that's one-on-one -on -one to improve your pronunciation or your English in general, whatever you want to focus on, then I am a teacher on Preply. And you can find my profile using the link in the description. The second special thing is that if you would like to have a class with me or any teacher on the platform, then I have a 50% off coupon for you. So you can get 50% off your first lesson with me or with any teacher on the platform. So when you join, make sure you use the code EMMA50, easy peasy to remember, EMMA50, and you get 50% off your first lesson. My availabilities are quite limited because I am a busy bee, so please don't be upset if you can't get any slots with me, I'm really sorry, but there are plenty of other teachers on the platform who are fantastic and they are waiting to help you. So, uh, link in the description, 50% off your first lesson, enjoy! What are you waiting for? <laughs> okay, so serious talk for a moment. This video is not intended whatsoever to push the narrative that you should sound like a native or that you should use this particular accent. I mean, I have a video all about how to do a Yorkshire accent, which is my original accent, let's say. It's where I'm from, if you're interested in that. I just want to make that really clear because some people believe that they must sound a certain way, that they must sound native and so on. And this video is not for that. It's simply just educational, entertaining, maybe? Perhaps no, more frustrating than entertaining, but I just wanted to make that disclaimer. With that being said, grab your cup of tea. I've got a huge cup of tea. I promise there's there's tea inside. It's like, it's a, it's a big mug, all right? Grab a mirror and you can practice. Look at yourself, look at me, have a quiet space, cup of tea. Let's go. So what you may have noticed about the RP and modern RP accents is that the R's are mostly silent. 
and it looks like a random rule for when they're pronounced or not pronounced, but there are rules. So when we have the letter R plus a vowel sound after it, we pronounce it. For example, red, around, rule. So you see, all of these have this r sound. I'll talk about the pronunciation of this a bit more. I just want to talk mostly about this removing the R's and when is it silent. So red, already, rule, we pronounce those R's. There is one exception to this rule and it's the word iron. So notice I don't say iron or iron, but iron, iron. When we have an R and then a consonant sound after it, or that R is at the end of a word, or you have the spelling RE, for example, then we don't pronounce it. For example, word, girl, more, far. Word, girl, more, far. So I'm not pronouncing it like word, girl, more, far. That sounds a little bit more American. <laughs> now the next sound is the most common sound in British English. It is the famous schwa. No doubt you've heard of it. Maybe you know what it is. If you don't, don't worry, we'll talk about it now. It's basically the most relaxed sound. You don't do anything, which is a bit weird for some people, <laughs> but seriously, don't do anything. Uh, uh, that's it. That's the schwa. <laughs> and it is used only in weak syllables. You will never find a stressed schwa. You will more commonly find it at the end of words, especially if they have an R or an RE spelling, like center, matter, better. So I'm not saying center, matter, better. I'm not saying that R. That's more of an American English feature. Center, really relax it center, matter, better. In a sentence, the center is better. The center, relax it, is better. You'll find that we use a lot of diphthongs at the ends of words in British English compared to American English. Diphthongs are essentially when you have two vowel sounds together in one syllable. For example, ear, care, tour. So I'm not saying ear, care, tour but ear, care, tour. Now, one difference between received pronunciation and modern received pronunciation is with those two final diphthongs. So, for example, that second one, in received pronunciation, it would be air, air, uh, air, air, so care, while in modern received, it would be air, so just like a long air, like Emma, yeah, <laughs> so it's longer. Air, care, care, care. There's not much of a difference, but anyway. <laughs> and the other one is ua. So tua can be pronounced as or tall. Tua, tall. Ua, or. This next sound is quite similar to the schwa. So if we go back to that schwa sound, keep it super relaxed, but just make it longer. Uh, uh, I'm not doing anything. Super lazy sound, not eh. Okay, relax it. Uh, bird, bird, world, world, prefer, prefer. And notice those R's are not pronounced, yeah? Not bird, world, prefer, bird, world, prefer. As a bonus to sound more English, you can use er uh as a kind of thinking sound. So each language has its own thinking sound. For example, what is uh, this? Yeah, once you start using that er, uh, it sounds more British. Now we have this o oh sound, so keep it very short and very round. O, oh. o, oh. dog, got lot. So, o, oh, dog, got, lot. Very round and very short. In a sentence, I forgot a lot. I forgot a lot. The next is, ah. <laughs> There's a nice long sound, ah, ah. 
far, far. So remember, no R, not far, far, far. It's just that vowel sound at the end. Car, car. Alarm, alarm. How far is the car? How far is the car? Did you notice that? How far is the car? But wait, Emma, you told me there was no R in that word. You pronounced it as far. I'm going to talk about this a little bit later. Now, the next sound. Take that R that we just did, but make it shorter. R. So we're just dropping the jaw here. R. Pub. Pub. Lunch. Lunch. Much. Much. A lovely pub lunch. A lovely pub lunch. So make sure you're not opening this too much, like a lovely pub lunch or anything like that. Just drop the jaw. You don't need to open your mouth. Relax your mouth, drop your jaw. A lovely pub lunch. Now we have or, so like that or in dog. Make sure you round your lips, but just make the vowel longer. Or, or, more, more, law, law. Important, important. So notice you've got o, or, so mind that length. The law is important. More naturally, the law is important. The law is important. You notice what I'm doing? I'm adding a little r after law. Why am I doing that? We'll talk about that later. Now these two sounds tend to get confused by students quite a lot. So we have e, it's quite smiley, e, and a, a. Set, sat, set, sat. Another one is met, mat, met, smile more, mat, make it wider, e, a, met, mat. I set the table and sat down. I set the table and sat down. The next two sounds that students often confuse are O and O. For example, goat and got, mope and mop. So we have O, O and O, O. Mope, mop. I got a goat. I got O, a goat, O. And the famous two sounds that all students seem to dread is I and E. So that second one, that longer one, E, I always call it the smiley E because you're smiling more. E, E, seat, seat. And the second one, well, the first one I mentioned, the other one, I usually call it the miserable I because we don't smile and it's very short. I, I, sit, seat, sit, seat, sit. So it's not just the length that's different here, it's also the position. E, smiley, I, miserable. Take a seat and sit down. Take a seat and sit down. Now you might have already noticed that in English we have long and short vowels. You'll see in the transcriptions that the longer sounding vowels have those two dots and that just means that it's a longer vowel sound. So for example, u, u, look, 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 look. Here's another one that learners sometimes confuse. O, o, cot, caught, cot, Caught. So that second one is longer. O, O. Another one. A, A. A, A. Cut, cart. Cut, cart. So with this one, you're just dropping your jaw. Remember, not A, like cat. But C, cut. Cut, cart. And the last one, I and E. Sit, seat. So this one, the position changes of the mouth as well. I, miserable I, sit. And then the longer, smiley E, seat, seat, sit, seat. 
Now we're going to get on to some trickier stuff. We're going to look at the two TH sounds. So yes, there are two. We have the voiced and we have the voiceless. The voiced sounds like V and the voiceless sounds like F. So do make sure that you're putting your tongue in between your teeth. And there should be air blowing here. For the voiced one, make sure you're vibrating your vocal cords here. To do that, try and pronounce a vowel. Ah, ah, so combine them. That's how you get the voiced one. So for the voiced one, we have this, that, these, those. Careful, you're not saying this, that, these, does. You'll be understood if you do, but if we're focusing on modern RP and receive pronunciation, this, so tongue between the teeth, this, that, these, those. This is where it's really handy to have a mirror, then you can compare your mouth placement to mine in this video. And then the voiceless one, think, thought, thumb, bath. Think, thought, thumb, bath. Now this bath is very interesting because you'll notice that I usually say bath in my videos. I'm going to talk about this more. It's a very, very interesting feature about English accents and England in general. I thought it was them. I thought it was them. Was them. So I'm just sliding my tongue forward. Was them. I thought it was them. Now, if you didn't already know, we have two types of L in English. We have the light L, which comes before a vowel, like love, light, lucky, and then the dark L, which comes after a vowel sound. For example, ball. So I'm not saying ball, I'm not releasing it like a la, a light L, but I'm holding it at the top. Ball, ball, fall. Fall, pool, pool. So careful you're not releasing it. Fall, pool, hold it. So keep the tip of your tongue up here, keep it up. Pool, fall, the girl fell. So don't pronounce that R. The girl, the girl fell. And hold that L. The girl fell. Now we're going to have a look at that famous English R sound, that R sound. So let's take a look at the word red. Many people who are learning English, they say it's something like red, red, okay, or red. This is when you're using the tip of your tongue here to touch the top of your mouth. However, notice what I'm doing with the English R. Red, red, red. 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 You see the difference? R I'm touching the top of my mouth with my tongue here, but red, the tip of my tongue, isn't touching the top of my mouth. Okay, so I'm going to put my cup of tea down for this part because I need two hands to explain this one. <laughs> so when you do an English R, notice that the tip of your tongue isn't touching the top of your mouth, like R, okay? It's down or it can just be in the middle kind of floating. So I can say like R or R. So it can be behind my bottom teeth, touching my bottom teeth, or it can be in the middle, just not touching the top of your mouth, okay? Because that's how you get that R sound. The back of your tongue, however, I always explain this as imagining you're eating peanut butter. So you're eating peanut butter, it's stuck to the inside of your teeth up at the top here, so it's on the inside. <laughs> It's all stuck and you're using the sides of your tongue here to remove the peanut butter from the inside of your top set of teeth. So your tongue should be in this position. So it's kind of touching at the sides here, up here. So that's how your tongue position needs to be. Your mouth placement, I always describe it as like a duck. So you have this kind of duck mouth, like So you see, I'm doing that mouth placement, that tongue placement, with the removing the peanut butter, the tip of my tongue here isn't touching the top. Combine that with the duck mouth. Red, red, run, run. So careful, it's not touching the top. Run, 
run, run, run. Now this is something very subtle, but it is something very important and it is quite noticeable. Make sure that you're pronouncing the voiced consonants at the end of words with voicing. <laughs> so what many students do is they tend to soften these and they make them more, they make them voiceless. So for example, the word bad starts to sound like bat. Be careful, bad, bat. So you're adding voicing to the end. Bad, he's a bad man. He's a batman, batman. <laughs> I was in un completely unintentional. <laughs> dog, doc, dog, g, g, g. So you're adding that g, that vibration. Dog, doc, badge, batch. Badge, batch, buzz, bus, buzz, bus. And finally, prove, proof, prove, proof. So really try and make sure you get that voicing at the end if it is a voiced consonant sound. Now in English, we have three nasal sounds. Mm, mm, and mm, which is right at the back here. Imagine you're doing like a g sound like in go, but you are holding it. Mm, g, mm. If you hold it, you get that third nasal sound. Now what tends to be tricky for learners is pronouncing this mm, mm, and mm at the end of words and distinguishing them. So let's practice. Sim, sin, sing. Sim, sin, sing. Wim, win, Wing, whim, win, wing. So our next sound is w. A lot of students pronounce this either like a v or even a g sound, depending on your native language. I like to think of this as kind of being like vowel sounds, like u, a, u, a, u, a. So nothing is going on back here and nothing is touching here. U, a, u, a. Wood, w would, will, will, win, w, w, win. So I'm not touching, not vin, not w, w, win. I would like some water. I w, so not I would like, or I would like, I w, I would like. I would like some water. W water. So nothing's touching, not water. Water. I would like some water. Now this is a super, super tiny thing, but it makes all the difference. When many learners are speaking English, what they do is they pronounce the D and the T more dental. What I mean by that is when you say D, you say it with your tongue touching the back of your teeth, like do instead of do. We bring it back a little bit, okay? Bring it back more towards what we call the alveolar ridge. That's the part inside your mouth that just starts to go up here, okay? Then you get to the hard palate. D, 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 d. So do, 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 do. You hear the difference? So I'm not touching my teeth when I do that d. The same goes with t. So I don't say tu, tu, but tu, tu. And notice that there's more air in the English t as well. I always tell my students to like try and push the air out from your mouth. For some speakers they try and push it from their lungs so it's like two <laughs> but you know don't do that. <laughs> Just kind of push it from your mouth like a little kind of explosion. To do. Team deem. Team deem. So not team deem. I'm not touching my teeth. Team deem. What do you do? What do you do? So not, what do you do? Touching my teeth. You'll be understood if you do that, don't worry. <laughs> but what do you do? It's a little bit further back. Now there was a really popular video going around some years ago where it was kind of uh, laughing and joking about the British accent. And it was saying something like, it's Tuesday, in it. So notice that we don't say it's Tuesday, but Tuesday. Depending on the variety, so received pronunciation will say Tuesday, t Tuesday. However, most speakers will say Tuesday. So that t and y in a word, we combine it and it becomes a ch. Tuesday, Tuesday. 
The same goes with stupid, 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 stupid. The same also happens with d and y together. So you can say duty, duty, or duty, duty. Now, as I mentioned, in received pronunciation, they will say duty and Tuesday. However, many native speakers in England will more than likely say Tuesday, stupid, duty, and so on. You can also do this in a sentence. So, can't you becomes can't you. Can't you go? Can't you go? And would you like a biscuit? Would you? Would you? Would you like a biscuit? Now, this little thing here is very small, but it will make your life a little bit easier. So, when we have t and r together, what many learners will do is they will try to pronounce them like separate letters, like to roo, okay? What I want you to do is combine them and say it more like a ch, true, true. So, we're doing more of a ch sound than a t sound. True, try. So not try or try, okay? Remember that r? We don't use the tip of our tongue to touch the top of our mouth. Try and train. So not terrain, train, train. The same happens with d and r. We combine them and we make more of a j sound like j, drew, drew, dry, dry, dray, dray. So true. Drew, try, dry, train, drain. So I'm pronouncing it more like a ch and j instead of a d and instead of a t and d. <laughs> now, if you remember before, I was highlighting some phrases like uh, the law is, and I was talking like, you notice there's a r in there? This part of the video is going to explain that part. We call it connected speech. So what we do in a sentence is we have words that start with a vowel and end with a vowel, and we connect them together with another sound to make it easier to transition. So for example, go away becomes go away, go away. So I'm adding that w in there, go away. We do this because that first vowel in go, o, is a very round shaped vowel. Ooh, go. So if your first vowel is very round, ooh, then you link with a w. Go away. You can also link with a y sound. They ya here. They ya. They ya here. They ya here. We do this because they has more of like a smiley spread vowel. They. So remember we had go. They, so pay attention to your mouth shape. Again, that's why mirror is important. They, ya, uh, they are uh, here. Now the third rule is if that first vowel is what I call an in-between vowel. What do I mean by that? I mean, it's not oo and it's not e, so it's not round and it's not spread. Okay, it's in-between. Like, where, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? We add a r sound in there to help link it. An easy way to know if it's linking with a r or not is to see if there is an r in the spelling. If there is an r in the spelling or an r e towards the end of the spelling, then we link it with a r if the next word starts with another vowel sound. We call this the linking r. So if there is an r or an r e at the end of the word, then we can link it if the next word starts with another vowel sound. This is the linking r. However, before with the example, I said the law is. And notice that there's no R there. However, we have that kind of in-between vowel. It's not oo, like the loo or the li, but the law is in between, right? The vowel's in between. The law is. Because it's one of these in-between vowels, we can link it with a r. And because there's no R in the spelling, we call this an intrusive R kind of intruding, it's invading, shouldn't be there. <laughs> but it is, and many, many native speakers in the UK use it. So for example, Emma and John are eating. Emma and John are eating. Emma and John are eating. The first one, there is no R in my name, Emma, so this would be considered an intrusive R. However, in R, there is an R there, <laughs> so we consider this a linking R. 
Emma and John are eating. If you're interested in learning more about connected speech and how to sound more natural when you're speaking, I do have a full playlist all about connected speech. I'll put that in the description for you. Now, something else that's important is to mind the pronunciation of words and make sure that they are not the American pronunciations. For example, tomato in American English would be more like tomato. Tomato, tomato. Another is herb, herb. Herb, herb. Sometimes vowels change completely. Root, root, route, route. So make sure you become familiar with which pronunciations are considered more American and more British. There are some ways of pronouncing words that were typically more American, however, they've now started sneaking more and more and more and become more popular in British English. A good example of this is the word schedule. You'll find that many Brits use the schedule pronunciation as opposed to schedule. So bear that in mind. Now this part of the video just covers some really interesting parts about different accents across England. Some really, really common things that you will hear that I think will really help you with your listening skills and understanding native speakers. If you ever talk to someone from the UK or you ever visit the UK, I just think these things will be helpful for you to know. So in the north of England, the sound uh doesn't exist. It changes to uh. So bus becomes bus, pub becomes pub, and so on. Now that mm sound, that nasal mm, like g that you hold mm that I taught you earlier, some accents do pronounce it with a g coming after it. So thing, thing, sing, sing, and so on. With some accents, that mm changes to an n when we add the suffix ing. So take a verb, for example, sing. If we say singing, some accents might say it like singing. So a n, singing. For example, the phone is ringing. The phone is ringing, as opposed to the phone is ringing. If you listen, there's really not that much difference between them, but you can see the difference if you look at the person's mouth. There's also something you might hear called th fronting. This is when the th changes to a th. So think becomes think, and also when v becomes v. So for example, mother becomes mother. So I said thanks to my mother. I said thanks to my mother. Now, if you remember earlier in the video, I was talking about the word bath and how I say bath. And this is because of something called the trap bath split. If you're from the South, then you would say the trap bath split. In the North, we don't distinguish these and we do say trap and bath with the same vowel. However, in received pronunciation, modern received pronunciation and most accents in the South of England, they will distinguish the two and they will say bath with a long vowel. This tends to happen with certain words. For example, grass, grass, path, path, glass, glass, class, class, and so on. So in the north, you will hear that very short ah, and in the south, you will hear that very long ah sound. And the last thing I want to talk about is the glottal stop. No doubt you have heard it used, but you might not know its name. This is in words, for example, like city or city, yeah? Better, better, British, British. So you can do this by using the phrase uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. So that kind of stop that you can feel here is the glottal stop. If we put that in a word, better. So better, better, uh-oh, better, better. You can hear this in the middle of words, as I mentioned, center. I live in the center of a city. <laughs> but you can also use it at the end of words. I sat on the mat instead of I sat on the mat. This is considered quite informal, but it is very common all over the UK. So no doubt you will hear it. If you're interested in learning how to pronounce this sound, I do have a more detailed video about it. I will put that in the description as well for you to check out after watching this one. And that's the end. Hopefully you have learned, just punch my poor plant, you've learned how to do a British accent, how to fake a British accent, 
whatever title I decide to call this video. <laughs> I hope this video has helped. Remember, if you're interested in taking private lessons, you can book a lesson with me or any of the teachers on Preply and use the code EMMA50 to get 50% off your first lesson. Remember to subscribe, like the video if you've enjoyed it and you've learned something new, and comment below with your favourite colour. <laughs> if you've got this far. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your week and I will see you next lesson. Bye bye! Just waiting for that bell. Oh, it stopped. Alright. Let's go! So it's not just the length that's different here, it's also the position. Just punched my T! We call this the linking R. So if there is an R in the spelling, or an R in the, in the spelling, little, 